The 2017 Mercedes-Benz GLC Coupe Back at the 2015 Shanghai Auto Show, we saw the Mercedes GLC Coupe concept, which was designed as a preview of a future production model. Well, here we are a year later at the New York Auto Show, and we now have the production version of the GLC Coupe, essentially a coupe body with SUV suspension. The remarkable thing about the production model is that, aside from a few nips and tucks, it's quite similar to the concept. Gordon Wagner, the head of design for Daimler AG, said, the GLC Coupe reflects our iconic Mercedes-Benz Coupe design while symbolizing the diversity of our brand, it is both hot and cool. He continued, with its design idiom of sensual purity, it perfectly embodies our styling philosophy while at the same time representing contemporary luxury. When the concept debuted last year, there were mixed opinions about it. Some said it was ugly, unpractical, and pointless, while others said it was beautiful and would be a welcomed addition to the Mercedes lineup. We'll find out how well it's publicly accepted soon enough, but until then, let's take a look at the GLC Coupe in production form and what it offers. Updated March 23, 2016, Mercedes dropped the official details on the new GLC Coupe at the 2016 New York Auto Show. Continue reading to learn more about the 2017 Mercedes-Benz GLC Coupe. Exterior According to Mercedes, the GLC Coupe is both dynamic and compact in appearance, with an overall length of 186.2 inches, a height of 63 inches, and a wheelbase of 113 inches. When comparing to the GLC, it is 3.2 inches longer and 1.6 inches lower. In comparison to the concept, the GLC Coupe is nearly identical. The headlights are a little bit taller, but carry the same overall shape and design. The same diamond radiator grille is perched in front of the hood, featuring a single, floating louver with the Mercedes emblem in the middle. Down below, the corner vents in the fascia are a little bit smaller, but have the same general shape. The air dam is outlined with a chrome trim insert with black mesh in the background. The air dam and vent layout are the biggest changes between the concept and production model in the front. When comparing to the GLC, it is 3.2 inches longer and 1.6 inches lower. From the side, the vehicle resembles a sports coupe, despite the fact it sits high for a coupe. Here, the biggest change from the concept to the production model are the refined side view mirrors. The same belt line and lower body lines are carried over from the concept. The GLC coupe can be equipped with large wheels that measure up to 21 inches, which sit flush with the body. The wheels shown in the images here are more refined versions of the wheels that debuted on the concept last year. Moving to the rear, there are some significant changes to talk about. The taillights are a little taller and feature a thin line of LEDs in the center that serve as the reverse lights. The built-in lip on the deck lid is now more pronounced. Down below, the rear fascia has gone through a dramatic change. Where the dual exhaust outlets were on the concept is now a flat surface that has been clearly toned down for the production version. There is now a red reflector on each corner that sits above the slanted rectangular exhaust outlets on each corner. The area for the license plate is recessed into the fascia, and a chrome insert has been installed along the bottom of the fascia and around the exhaust outlets. Exterior Dimensions Interior on the inside, we find a rather smooth dashboard. The lift on the driver's side for the instrument cluster sits about an inch higher than the steering wheel, and there's a single, circular vent in each corner of the dash. The interior offers a two-tone color scheme, with our images depicting a brown leather used on the upper portion of the dashboard as well as the upper portion of the door trim panels. There's a lighter, vanilla-like color that takes up the lower dashboard, lower trim panels, and the rest of the upholstery. The interior offers a two-tone color scheme, with our images depicting a brown leather used on the upper portion of the dashboard as well as the upper portion of the door trim panels. Another set of images shows the same dash layout with a dark gray appearance. In this configuration, the only contrasting color is the silver, diamond quilted leather that makes up the center of the seats and the center of the door trim panels. There are also wood trim inserts on the doors separating the upper and lower portions, and on the center console and center stack. These inserts appear to be a silver color in the model equipped with the gray interior. An optional interior sport package is also available. 
On the AMG GLC 43 variant, sport seats are included and come wrapped in MB Tex man-made leather DINAMICA microfiber, or they can be done up in bicolor leather upholstery similar to the images with the gray interior. In the GLC 300, this package includes a flat bottom steering wheel, rubber studded pedals, and AMG floor mats. The GLC 300 is also available with red MB Tex upholstery as an option. As you can see from the images, the instrument cluster features a two-gauge layout, with the speedo on the left and the tachometer on the right. In the middle, there is a small, TFT display screen that serves as a driver's information center. Perched on top of the center stack is a semi-integrated infotainment display screen. Several buttons sit below the three central air vents, with a CD load area and audio control unit located just below that. So far, we don't have any shots of the rear seating area, but it's safe to assume that it naturally takes on the same appointments as the front seating area. I expect the seats to fold down, offering access to the trunk from the interior and accommodating the transport of larger items. According to Mercedes, there are many options to choose from for the interior, so I wouldn't be surprised if some models have additional tablet devices for rear seat passengers, or an integrated infotainment screen. Drivetrain the GLC 300 is powered by a four-cylinder engine that produces 241 horsepower. That power is sent to all four wheels via the standard 4 Modich AWD system. A new compact transfer case is attached directly to the 9G Tronic 9-speed automatic transmission. As of this writing, Mercedes has yet to release performance figures for the GLC 300, so stay tuned for updates in that department. A new compact transfer case is attached directly to the 9G Tronic 9-speed automatic transmission. The GLC Coupe comes standard with an off-road suspension that includes Dynamic Select with multiple driving modes. There is Eco, Comfort, Sport, Sport Plus, and Individual. As is the case with all Mercedes models equipped with Dynamic Select, Eco mode offers the best fuel economy at the cost of performance. Comfort relaxes the suspension and offers smoother shifting, while Sport and Sport Plus naturally offer the best levels of performance, quicker shifting and more revs. In individual mode, you can customize your driving experience to suit your needs. Prices Mercedes has yet to release pricing details for the new GLC Coupe. Pricing should be made available closer to its launch in early 2017. Considering it will compete against models like the BMW X4 and the Porsche Macan, expect pricing to start somewhere between $45,000 and $50,000. Competition BMW X4 The GLC Coupe is a direct response to the BMW X4, so it's only natural that the Bimmer is its key competitor. The BMW X4 has the same funky roofline as the GLC Coupe, and it comes standard with lots of premium goodies, such as the iDrive controller, an LCD touchscreen, active cruise control, and more. Under the hood, the US Spec X4 is available in two flavors, X-Drive 28i and X-Drive 35i. The X-Drive 28i makes use of a 2.0-liter four-cylinder engine that produces 240 horsepower, while the X-Drive 35i brings in a 3.0-liter six-cylinder that cranks out 300 horses. The X4 X-Drive 28i starts out at $44,700, and the X-Drive 35i comes in at $48,000. Read our full review on the 2015 BMW X4 here. Porsche Macan Though the Porsche Macan doesn't offer a coupe-like version, yet, it's still a model that buyers considering upper-level versions of the GLC coupe may consider. Like all Porsches, the Macan comes loaded to the gills with standard leather, a 4.8-inch color screen in the instrument cluster, a 16-speaker sound system, and more. Under the hood, the US spec Macan is available in two states of tune. The Macan S features a 3.0-liter V6 engine that puts out 340 horsepower and 339 pound-feet of torque. The Macan Turbo also uses a 3.0-liter V6, but it's tuned to deliver 400 horsepower and 406 pound-feet of torque. 
Outside of the US, the Mackin has a base 2.0-liter engine with 237 horsepower and 258 pound-feet of torque that would match up well against the base GLC class coupe, but it remains unclear whether this engine will come to the US. Porsche does put a premium on the Mackin, as its base S model starts from $53,600 and the turbo model starts at $73,900. Click here to read our full review of the Porsche Macan. Conclusion It's great that Mercedes managed to keep the production model as close to the concept as possible, and it's about time that brand takes on the BMW X4. My biggest problem here is that auto manufacturers are polluting the market with so many different variations of vehicles. Now we have SUVs on coupe suspension, and coupes on SUV suspension, along with your everyday cars and SUVs. It's rather annoying, to be honest. As far as the GLC coupe goes, I'm digging the interior. It's nicely put together, it looks comfortable, and it's quite luxurious, but all of that comes packed into the coupe body style. Because of the body style, the GLC coupe, much like the BMW X4, looks quite awkward. That raked roof and the stylish rear end would look great if it didn't sit so high in the air. All told, I'm in the group of people that dislike the model as a whole, but I can appreciate the effort Mercedes put into designing and creating the vehicle. If nothing else, I have to respect that it couldn't let models like the BMW X4 go uncontested. Love it looks better than the BMW X4 nice interior decent output from 4-cylinder engine. Leave it limited cargo room and rear headroom still a coupe on SUV suspension looks awkward updated history. Updated the 5th of January 2016, our spy photographers caught the production version of the upcoming GLC coupe out for a new testing session. As you can see the car begins to remove its camouflage meaning that an official debut should happen shortly. Rumors suggest we will see it at the 2016 Geneva Motor Show. Updated the 8th of April 2015, while all Mercedes dropped on the future GLC coupe as a sketch that shows pretty much nothing, we decided to create a rendering of what we think the car will look like. We hope you like it. Rendering Spy Shots March 16, 2016 Mercedes GLC coupe loses more of its camouflage. January 5, 2016 Mercedes GLC Coupe out for a new testing session. July 7, 2015 Mercedes GLC Coupe caught testing in Germany. If you liked this video, please share your thoughts in the comments below and don't forget to hit the subscribe button.